Welcome back all. Today we're going to go ahead and set up a VPN in Kali Linux 2.0. I am using a virtual I'm using a virtual machine. If you're not, doesn't really matter. The proce the procedure is pretty much the same. So it doesn't matter which uh, operating system is running as your host. Uh, I'm running a Fedora as my host, but doesn't really matter if it's Windows or Mac or whatever else there might be out there uh, completely irrelevant just have a if as long as the virtual machine is functional it should work anyway if you're using a virtual machine go to devices and network network settings and make sure that these settings that we've talked about are proper so it, it doesn't necessarily need to be in bridged mode, uh, but I'm using bridged mode. Uh, I'm using a bridged, bridged adapter. So this is the interface. And here where it says name, this is the interface that you are using. So no big deal. Uh, just take a look on your host system, which interface you are using, and then select it here. If you don't know, and if you're too lazy to check it, uh, try, try, there are usually will have maximum three or something like that, maybe a little bit more. Uh, just try one after another if you can't really bother to check. But yeah, uh, that should be that should be pretty much self-explanatory. I've talked about this in the previous tutorials. Anyway, uh, in down down in the down in the advanced, make sure that the promiscuous mode is allow all. And that is pretty much it, actually. There isn't that much else that you need to do. Uh, just go ahead and click on OK. So now that I have the virtual machine up and running, I'm going to go ahead and open up the terminal. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Oh, that was a bit more. And one of the f very first things that we're going to do is change our DNS settings because I've noticed that people can't do and follow through certain things in the tutorial because they're using some really weird DNS servers uh, and those DNS servers are basically blocking you as they are doing traffic filtration or something like that. So if you do cat uh, at C res ups, solve.conf you can see uh, which you can see which uh, DNS servers are you using so I'm using uh, the one provided by my ISP so I'm just using my router basically my home gateway this is the LAN IP address which is like you have a 99% chance that it is the same that you have the same as mine and this is basically forwarding the traffic to my ISP from where, from who has a DNS server, and there I can actually get uh, my queries resolved. But we don't really want that because there is a lot of because I mean not always, but certainly in a lot of cases there is a lot of filtration on those on those DNS servers. So we will change that. Let's go ahead and just clear the screen and type in. Uh, Vim is, let me see if Vim is installed. It is, excellent. Oops. Clear. Type in vim space slash. Actually, you know what? Let's just use nano. It's it, It'll be a lot simpler for you. So nano Etsy DHCP DHC client DH client dot conf press enter scroll down with a mouse scroll or with an, air, with an arrow whichever way you prefer and let's see where is that line uh, okay so this one that says prepend, prepend domain name servers let's go ahead and remove that delete that and here we are going to type in our new name servers so what shall it be well, uh, just go on to the net. No big deal. Also, uh, you can choose a DNS server, which is a not in your own country. Uh, that That's sometimes a good idea as well. I am going to use OpenDNS. I have been using thus far. They're pretty good and they're pretty safe. As far as I know and as far as my experience goes. So, OpenDNS. 
DNS. You definitely have other ones that are available up there. Open DNS IP addresses, that's what we need. And there we go. So these are the two IP addresses which uh, we are going to use. So where is the right the GNOME interface? By the way, if you're wondering how I am doing this, uh, you know that you know the you know the button in Windows that you press for start. It's in between Control and Alt. It has a Windows sign on it. So if you press that button, it's going to split the screen into multiple windows. Just something from the GNOME shell, GNOME uh, GUI environment. So go ahead and paste one IP address here, and then type in a comma, and then space, and then take the second IP address. Let's go back to the terminal. Wait, I wonder if I can do that. Ah, no, it's a virtual machine. In the real machines, you can actually tap the upper left corner twice or once with a mouse, and this will happen as well. Okay, so there we go. Let's control O to save, press Enter, and then press Control X to exit. Now we need to type in service uh, service uh, network manager restart now we're gonna do cat at C resolve.conf and here you go uh, so I have this one I have this one and then I have the ISP down at the bottom now uh, there is a there is a way of removing this one at the bottom as well, but this is almost never going to get used. I mean, the second one is almost never going to get used, unless there's some load balancing on the OpenDNS in between the two IP addresses. But the third one, very, very rarely will it uh, actually be used. So yeah, no worries. No worries there. If you want to be like 100%, pretty much 100% safe, you can go back to this file and then add a third address and then only those three will be used because by default only three can be used. Uh, you can have one main and two fail safes and I am going to go ahead and type in the I'm gonna go ahead and use the Google one but you don't have to use, use whichever one you want. I'm just using an example here. I prefer to use uh, OpenDNS and you can definitely find some uh, fairly anonymous I, DNS servers out there on the net. Please, please, please be careful. Uh, make Once you find the DNS servers, go onto the forums and see what people have been saying about those DNS servers. What is their reputation like? Do they protect, do they, uh, do, do they do something mischievous or something, of, or something like that? Do they do some, is it like a fake thing that you just happen to stumble on across the net, promising you a lot of things but delivering nothing and just uh, redirecting you to some advertising sites or redirecting you to malicious sites? So just be very careful and uh, with that, and make sure that you select the select the reputable ones. Anyway, just go ahead and press Control O to save as before. Enter Control X to exit. And then just we just need to restart the network manager again, no big deal. Now we can go ahead and cat out the Etsy resolve.conf. And you can see that we have one, two, three. And you have a note, the libc resolver may not support more than three name servers. Uh, the name servers listed below may not be recognized. <laughs> Actually, they won't be recognized. So you have, uh, I've just listed these three as an example, but you can take a DNS server from anywhere on this planet Earth. So for example, if you are in the US or if you are in Japan or if you are in China or in Germany or something like that, uh, you don't necessarily need to choose a DNS server from that country. You can choose a DNS server from some other country uh, 
you can choose yeah so if you're using a vpn you don't want uh, i mean or proxies if you're using proxies especially you don't want to afford any dns uh basically if somebody sees a okay let me put it like this i'm getting confused i'm confusing you a little bit here if you are using a proxy and let's say that you are in france and then you are using a proxy from germany so it appears as though your traffic is coming from germany but your DNS server is still in France. So somebody might infer from that that you are uh, from France. Therefore, if you choose a DNS server in Germany as well, your proxy and your DNS server will both match uh, Germany. But you can choose a DNS server from some other country, let's say Finland. So you can have a Finnish DNS server and you can have a German uh German IP address on the net. So that way, uh, somebody cannot conclude from which country you are coming from, and that is a pretty good thing. Another note is that uh, DNS servers, by default, they don't log queries. But is it, I mean, it would be it would be a massive operation to log the, uh, to log all the daily queries. Maybe somebody does it. I don't know. I cannot guarantee it to you. I know that the DNS servers by default, uh, the ones the you can install a DNS server and configure it, and you will see that by default it doesn't log queries. But you know somebody might set it up or something like that might happen. So be very very careful which DNS servers are you using. Use the ones that give you a, that have a good standing reputation and you can also use the ones in countries which have a good standing reputation in terms of respecting user privacy for example uh, netherlands is one of the is one of very good examples i think sweden as well is pretty good there and there are some other european countries and countries worldwide that i can't think of now at the moment but doesn't really matter you can look this up on the net it's pretty uh, the information is widely available so where from which countries can you choose the dns servers and which dns servers should you choose now i've also i'm sorry i'm sorry for making this lengthy but i do want to explain a couple of points here before i wrap it up and then uh go into the DN, into the vpn setup itself uh yeah i've had people before who stated that they've had problems when they changed the dns and then uh they've changed the dns and then they've used the VPN and it, the DNS leak test still shows that their DNS is in the US. Well, yes, because the DNS server you've selected is actually from the US. So if you just choose another one from another country elsewhere in the world, it will just show uh, that the DNS is in that country. So you don't actually have a DNS leak. It's just that that IP address on that DNS server is physically located in the country of your origin. So if you just choose another one, you will be fine. Anyway, uh, in the follow-up tutorial, I'm running a little bit short on time. So in the follow-up tutorial, we're just going to go ahead and continue with this, download the files that we need to download, and connect to uh, the VPN service.